This is the fourth part of our video series, Continuous Delivery 101. In this part, we're going to attempt to answer the question, where do I get started? One method for doing that is what's called value stream mapping. This is a way to find out where the waste is in your current process and tell you which parts to automate first. As a vendor, it would be easy to say, just use our tool. But the truth is that while tools are important, they don't actually solve problems by themselves. The first step is to honestly ask yourself if you're ready to implement continuous delivery. Do you put everything in version control? Do you practice continuous integration? If you haven't already, be sure to watch parts one and two of this series, which go over some of these concepts. There is also a blog series called Are You Ready for Continuous Delivery on GoCD's website at go.cd slash blog. If you've decided you're ready, you still need to decide where to focus your energy. Value stream mapping is a method that can help you decide where you can get the most return on your investment. If you're new to the concept of value stream mapping, some of the examples on the internet can be pretty intimidating. Don't worry, for the purposes of this video, we're going to simplify it quite a bit. Creating a value stream map of your process is a team activity. It's important that the team consists of people involved with every step of the process you're mapping. It's also important to have people who actually do the work present for the entire exercise. Don't accept someone who says they know how the group works. The first step in creating a value stream map is to identify your current state. As a reminder, this is a group exercise, including everyone involved. It's important that this accurately identify what you actually do, even if it's not what's intended. I'd also highly recommend doing this in pencil or on a whiteboard. You'll be changing it quite a bit. We start by identifying the process steps involved. For this exercise, I'm going to keep this pretty high level, but I hope you'll understand the goals. Most people start from the end when creating a value stream map and work backwards. There are many reasons for this, not the least of which is to avoid muscle memory of what you think should happen as opposed to what does. The next thing we need to do is take down how long each of these steps takes. It would be very easy to look at this now and declare that you can deploy once a week. You just have to shorten the time taken for manual regression testing, it can be even shorter. But we don't have all of the information. If you watched the first video in this series, you may remember that the source of much of our waste isn't in how the process steps are done, but the handoff between disparate teams and systems responsible for those steps. Going back to our process map, we now need to measure how much lead time is required for each step. Once we dig in, we find that the team responsible for doing a production deployment has a seven-day backlog for the people needed on that environment. It's the same type of situation for the staging environment, but since that's not as risky, they are willing to do it with less staff available, so are able to cut down the time to three days. When we talk to the people who run performance tests, we find out that it takes three weeks to get all of the systems required for those tests to be set up. They have to request very large VMs that aren't normally used in day-to-day -day business. The lead time for the team that does manual regression testing is a few days long for the same reason, system availability. We thought we could release around once a week with our current process, but in fact, it's more than a month. The good news is this, we've identified an area where automation can help us cut a large amount of waste. The next thing we need to do is map out our desired future state. Again, this is an overly simplistic example, but after much discussion, we've decided that we can reduce the lead time for performance testing by automatically provisioning performance testing environments. In this example, changes to our process would cut our cycle time from 32 days to 17. Building again on our fictional value stream map. What are the actions we could take to cut that time down? Let's assume that we've made the decision to utilize one of the public cloud providers. We could set up a pipeline in our continuous delivery tool to help. The first stage of this pipeline would start up the required number of hosts. We would then run the tests on all of these hosts and then shut those machines back down so that we're not paying for them. If you're sharing these hosts with other products, you may choose to leave them running, of course. It's a balance between the usage costs and startup time that you'll need to decide for yourself. Thank you for watching this part of our video series. Be sure to check out part number five where we're going to some of the tools commonly used in continuous delivery.